thrombongitis of the trans or Berger's disease by Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, National Heart Institute, Egypt. Welcome, my dear colleagues, to my channel. Today, we will discuss one type of vasculitis disease affecting small and medium sized vessels, which is thrombongitis obletrans or Berger's disease. From its name, the disease was attributed to Mr. Leo Berger, who published extensive pathologic findings from amputated limbs of the affected patients in 1908. So, what is the definition of Berger's disease? Berger's disease is a progressive segmental inflammatory disease that most commonly affects small to medium sized arteries and veins of upper and lower limbs with cellular and inflammatory crucif thrombus, which relatively spares blood vessel wall. Here, when describing Berger's disease, we should remember three basic points to differentiate it from other types of vasculitis. First basic point that the disease affects small and medium sized vessels and vessels, I mean here arteries and veins. The second basic point, the disease characterized by formation of intraluminal, hypercellular and inflammatory thrombus. While the third basic point that Berger disease is bearing internal elastic lamina of the vessel wall. What are the epidemiologic features of Berger's disease? Berger's disease is a rare disease, most commonly affecting smokers. Men are more commonly affected by disease than women, with male to female ratio of 3 to 1 at the age of 20 to 45 years. Children or elderly not affected by the disease. For example, in USA, the prevalence of the disease approximately 12.6 to 20 cases per 100,000 population. Etiology of Berger's disease. Actually, the etiology of the disease is unknown. One presumption that genetic predisposition play a central role in the etiology. Patients with human leukocyte antigen A9, B5 are potential candidates. In such genetic predisposition, presence of smoking leads to hypersensitivity reaction with some of the tobacco components such as nicotine. This reaction results in immunologic dysfunction and enhanced cellular sensitivity to type 1 and type 3 collagen. Those collagen are present in high concentration in the blood vessel. Anti-endothelial antibody formation increased and impaired endothelial dependent vasodilatation are subsequent results. This leads to hypercoagulability state and inflammation starts. Pathophysiology of Berger's disease. Pathologically, the disease was described in three phases. Phase one or acute phase. Thrombosis occur in small and medium sized vessels. Inflammation in this phase bears vessel wall. The thrombus characterized by polymorph nuclear leukocyte aggregations, microabscesses formation, multinuclear giant cells. Then second phase or subacute phase. Thrombus in this phase characterized by decreased hypercellularity with frequent recanalization of the occluded vessel lumen. 
And finally, the third phase or the chronic phase. In such phase, inflammation is no longer present. Organized thrombus and vascular fibrosis remain. Clinical picture of Berger's disease. Manifestation of Berger's disease result from impaired blood flow to the forearm and hand vessels in the upper limb and in the infrapopliteal vessels in the lower limb. Patient usually smoker male around 20 to 45 years age. Patient typically present with ischemic symptoms. These ischemic symptoms, according to the severity, range from coldness of the toes or fingers, distal ischemic pain, prodication of the feet or hands, and ulceration or gangrene. Superficial thrombophilipitis, as we can see here in the image, very important sign in Berger's disease. What is superficial thrombophilipitis? It is inflammatory thrombosis of the superficial veins in the lower extremities. Was found in 50% of patients with Berger's disease. Why is that sign is important? Because that sign is absent in other types of vasculitis. When peripheral nerves are involved by the inflammatory process, parasasia of toes, feet, and hands is often described. Renoid's phenomena is present in 40% of patients, which epithetic color changes of fingers or toes. As we see here, the color of the fingers is white due to lack of blood flow, then blue due to lack of oxygen, and finally red when blood flow returns to normal. Majority of patients with Berger's disease present with ischemic ulcerations affecting toes or fingers. Abnormal modified Allen test in young smoker patient with digital ischemia is strongly suggestive of Berger's disease. Modified Allen test is used to assist collateral blood flow to the hand. Both ulnar and radial artery are included by the examining fingers, while patient clenching fist tightly. Patient open and relax his hands. Release pressure from ulnar artery while maintaining pressure on the radial artery and look to the color of the bar. If the hand does not flushing within 5 to 15 seconds from pressure release, this means ulnar circulation is not adequate. So, persistent pallor in patients with Berger disease in the palm indicates inadequate collateral blood flow to the hand. Diagnosis of Berger's disease. Traditionally, diagnosis of Berger's disease is based on five criteria described by Shinoya. First, onset of the disease before the age of 50. Second, history of smoking, even passive smoking. Third, infrapopliteal artery occlusive lesion. Fourth, either upper limb involvement or migratory thrombophilipitis, while the fifth criteria is the absence of a serious choleritic risk factor other than smoking. So, it means to diagnose patient with Berger disease need all the five criteria together, five of five. On the other hand, if the clinical picture is consistent with imaging and pathological finding 
and other disease were excluded, thrombogenesis obliterans can be diagnosed as well. Complications Impaired blood flow in the affected limbs may result in skin ulcerations. Tissue can be necrotic and gangrenous with superimposed infection, which may need amputation. Rarely, Berger's disease can affect visceral blood vessels, which may lead to coronary, renal, splenic, or mesenteric ischemia. What is the differential diagnosis of Berger's disease? Actually, a lot of diseases can be mimic Berger's disease. For example, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. There is positive anti-cardiolipine antibody, beta-2 glycoprotein antibody, or lobus anticoagulant antibodies. These antibodies are negative in Berger's disease. In forest bite, the disease can affect any age and the patient was exposed to temperature below zero degrees Celsius. In the Reynolds syndrome, there is episodic change in the color of toes or fingers after exposure to cold or stress with the underlying manifestation of the main disease. In gain cell arthritis, the vasculitis affect the skull and head arteries. In anterior sclerosis obliterans, fibrosis of the tunica intima, while in Berger disease, vessel wall usually spared, in diabetic angiopathy, diagnosis with hemoglobin A1c. In cardiac source of emboli, diagnosed by the echo. In a serious choleritic peripheral arterial disease, there is classic risk factor of a serious sclerosis like smoking, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and obesity. And Duplex ultrasound is diagnostic. Investigations of Berger's disease. Generally, there is no specific test diagnostic for Berger's disease. Laboratory workup aim to exclude other diseases from the differential diagnosis, such as hemoglobin A1c to exclude diabetic angiopathy. Anti-nuclear antibody, anti-centromere antibody, scleroderma 70 antibody, help to exclude SLE, scleroderma, and systemic sclerosis. Rheumatoid factor to exclude rheumatoid arthritis. Antiphospholipid antibodies to exclude antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Imaging modality, echo to exclude cardiac source of embolism, duplex ultrasound to exclude other diseases such as atherosclerosis or arterial wall aneurysm, angiography, whether by MRI or CT or digital subtraction angiography, help to delineate the arterial lumen. Here, this slide shows angiography of the hand vessels of patients with Berger disease. The whole mark, as we can see, of a patient with Berger disease is the non aceris coloritic segmental occlusive lesion of the small and medium sized vessels. See here the black arrow. Associated with formation of distinctive small collateral vessel around the area of occlusion. See here the red arrow.
Arteriographic findings suggest Berger's disease, but not pathognomonic because similar lesions can be observed in patients with scleroderma, rheumatoid vasculitis, SLE, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. This pattern of arterial occlusion and collateral vessels can suggest Berger's disease. If there is abrupt occlusion of the lumen, localized stenosis, moth eating, irregularity of the lumen with bridging collaterals, corkscrew collaterals, tree root collaterals, dilatation of the lumen, or early venous filling, these arteriographic findings can suggest the diagnosis of Berger's disease. Treatment and management of patients with Berger's disease. The most important step in the treatment of patients with Berger's disease is the absolute discontinuance of tobacco smoking. This is the only strategy proven to prevent disease progression and complication. Antiplatelets such as teclobidine and colopidogrel are used to prevent platelet aggregation and more thrombus formation. Pain of the patient can be controlled by using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or narcotic drugs. Prostacyclines or its analogues are an option for treatment of patient manifestation. They act by activating adenylate cyclase to increase the levels of cyclic AMB, as a result leading to vasodilatation and inhibition of platelet aggregation. IV allobrostadine, subcutaneous triprostinil, or oral pirabrost can be an option. Revascularization. Revascularization is an option for treatment of patients with Berger's disease. When there is wrist pain or ulcer not improving with conservative treatment, which can be surgical by using autologous vein graft to be anastomosed around the site of occlusion in the affected artery, or by endovascular technique, which include percutaneous transluminal angioplasty and dilatation of the occluded segment of the artery. When, when pain cannot be controlled by conservative measures or revascularization is impossible, sympathectomy can be done, which is surgical by microcutting or clipping sympathetic nerves or pharmacological by injecting local anesthetic or neurolytic substance such as alcohol into sympathetic nerve. As a result, pain signals cannot be felt. When all measures fail to treat the patient, amputation of the affected part can be done. Other choices which are investigational may be tried such as hyperbaric oxygen or administration of growth factor to help in new blood vessel formation in the affected limb.